So I'm just going to take you into grade eight. So for students, uh, right here, you can see these are all the different classes the student is enrolled in. So most of your students will only have one class card, given that they'll most likely only be in your class. Uh, but just by clicking on the class card, the students are brought to this new page, which is exciting. This is the dashboard. So the dashboard shows something we call the skyline, um, which we can cover in a moment. It shows the student's performance overview. It shows any class activities the teacher may have assigned, and it also shows their learning journey. So the learning journey is one of the most important parts of Guru. This is the GPS for learning, essentially. So this is the progress. And you can see it's just lessons and collections that chart the path to where your student needs to be. So on the student side, it says things like milestone one. On your side, you'll actually see grade level information. So you can actually view the exact grade level that your student's working in. And then if I go back to the dashboard, I can show you the skyline. This is also which is very high level. Every single one of these little blocks is a competency. So you'll be able to just at a glance look and see my student has accomplished or has mastered all of this work right here. And then they need to get to this green line to be on grade level proficiency. So you can see how much work they need to do. So it's analogous to the learning journey. It lets you see the progress that they need to make. And I'll just quickly show you performance overview. So you can also, your students have access to a lot of data of their own. So I'm going to just go back to July for this kid. The, uh, the student can see they have mastered three competencies. They're working on one. They can also see the total amount of time they've spent and also the amount of time they've spent in assessments and collections specifically. Again, view all the competencies that they've mastered and the dates associated. And they can also see targets for growth in areas of concern. So that lets the students self-monitor. It allows them to see that, oh, I really need to work on the Pythagorean theorem a little bit more. I'm just gonna go back to the learning journey and then talk about some implementation ideas. So if we go back into the learning journey, most students will do this sequentially, so it'll be one at a time. This account uh, has skipped around a little bit, as you can see, which is fine. Just show you a collection very quickly. So here we can see here's a question, then answer, move forward. And then your student may interact with a video resource. But these are typically structured as a few resources, so websites, videos, what have you, also interactives, which is fun. And then we'll have some questions in there as well. So with the learning journey and all of this, what our teachers typically end up doing or what our districts typically end up doing is setting goals such as accomplishing two competencies per week, for example, or dedicating a certain amount of time so your students can monitor from this page if they've met those goals that you've set. So the whole the whole objective, and it's whether it's math or science or whatever course your students are using, the whole objective is to figure out where they are, what they know, especially with the pandemic having, you know, have your kids come in potentially to an eighth grade class with gaps, maybe in fourth grade or fifth grade material. The whole objective is to figure out where the gaps are and then sort of chart a path for them that allows them to access and work on that material. Some students might have shorter learning journeys or journeys than others, depending on what they're really coming to you with. So step one is really in our platform is to figure out where they are. And that gets uh, accomplished through diagnostics. Um, their teacher developed diagnostics and they occur at the domain level. And so whenever your students interact with them, They'll have some uh, adaptive questions and we'll sort of pinpoint where they are and then their journey forward will be mapped out. You might have students that have gaps pretty far back. Some might be pretty much on grade level. So the, the objectives keep it personalized. So each student really is only offered what they need, but we make sure that they are also offered what they need. That's sort of step one is figuring out where they are and making that path forward. And then as Dina mentioned, another really big component of this is agency on the student side. So I'm going to show you the teacher side in, in a minute or two. 
obviously you as the teacher will have control. I mean, this isn't sort of just like let the kids run wild. That's horrifying. But there is a lot of agency on the student side. So the things Dina showed you, like with the learning journey where the student can see, oh, I got an 80% on this lesson, or I spent six minutes on this collection, which is just a bundle of resources. The student can really monitor themselves. So something that worked super well last year um, at LUSD was that there was like district-wide goal and implementation, at least in the beginning of the year, what we what Katrina settled on and the teachers really embraced was two competencies per week seemed to work out really well. And having that goal set, whether it's a different goal this year or not, seemed to be super important and really fundamental to the success in the district. We've tried to amp up the amount of agency the kids have too in tracking their own work. So not having to wait for their teacher to tell them on Friday, you only master one competency. There's bunches of ways for for kids to track their own learning. So like Dina showed in the learning journey, again, they can go out of order. Nothing's blocked off to them. So if you have one of those really adventurous kids that likes to work ahead, that's fine. If you want to run this um, synchronously in class where you say everybody work on X lesson, doable. If you want to assign it as just like, okay, we've got 15 minutes, everybody get on Navigator, work on your learning journey. You might have some kids working on third grade material, some on sixth, fine. It's really designed not to replace anything you do, but to just support what you're already doing in the classroom. We're not trying to make any more work for you. We are just trying to provide a way to sort of identify the gaps that your kids might have and then also fill them in. You'll notice it looks pretty similar to the student side, so that's on purpose. Let's say you teach eight sections of something. You'll have one class card per section. So it's like every time you have a unique roster for your class, you'll have a class card. So I'm just going to look at one. We'll just say grade eight math. This you know, could be my fourth period science class, but we'll just look at grade eight math for now. And so just like Dina showed you with the student, we also have this sort of learning journey of the course on the teacher side. So the student's able to monitor their own personal learning journey, but the teacher also has the ability to track at a really high level, where are my kids and also how are they doing on the things they're working on? So just super high level, we tried to make it as easy as possible to give you data without having to have you dig around for it. So just right off the bat, I can see just a trend here. My kids are doing pretty well on the earlier material and this is member grade eight. So I would hope that this would be in green like the traffic light system. We've got some issues in the, in the middle grades here, and then there's much more struggle at the higher levels. So just really right off the bat high level, it might indicate to me I need to take a closer look at what's going on with seventh and eighth grade material. It's colored in a way to, that we were aiming to make it easier for you to make quicker decisions or for you to notice problem areas. So like my eye right away is drawn right here. I'm thinking, oh my God, I have an average score of 39% on this lesson. This is something I really probably need to reteach or at least address with small groups. There is a lot of data. I get very excited about it. So I'm doing my best to not overwhelm you with the amount of it. Like we said in the beginning, we'll go over it more um, when we do training and when we have you know webinars and stuff, but class level version of what the students had. So the student has their own learning journey, which might be fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth grade. I, as the teacher, can see everything that's possibly available to my kids. We also have a lot of reports. I'm probably not going to talk about them right now. Dina showed you the skyline very briefly. It's sort of just like a vertical way of tracking the learning journey or the progress. So it's another way to try to get that quick feeling of, oh my goodness, I can see this student, Domenico, is potentially struggling a little bit relative to the other students. So like Dina said, each of those little blue blocks, and you can click in on any student if you want to, each of the little blue blocks represents one competency. And so competency, same thing as a learning standard in guru language. So we also have it set up as one competency is one lesson. So this little blue block is one lesson or one topic. So I can see all of this has been achieved by my student so far by Domenico. The light blue here is stuff he's working on. And the distance between where he is and where he needs to be is something else I can see. 
he's doing pretty well. I can see the distance between where he is and where he needs to be. Isn't super huge for operations and algebraic thinking. That's great. Um, this one right here is making me nervous. So measurement and data, it's a big jump. So that's something I know just at this level looking, Domenico might need some extra support with. And when I tell you that you can click into everything, I'm not exaggerating. So if you wanted to click into this and look at specific standards and scores on things, that's doable. We've got the, the learning journey report. We have these to offer a different, if you're sort of graphically oriented to help you and help you make sort of those actionable decisions. This is new. We haven't showed you this yet, but this is based on a lot of feedback from me. So that's something I do want to mention too, is that we hope to continue this really collaborative relationship that we have with you all. Um, we have phone calls and just emails back and forth of things that if you're using Navigator in class and think, man, I would really like this feature, or I really don't understand how this works, just email. Because a lot of what's on this page is because of feedback that we got from other teachers. And so it's super important to us. And we want you to feel welcome to, to share feedback with us, negative, positive, constructive, whatever. Just another graphical representation of how your kids are doing. Again, the objective here is to make the data that you have available actionable. So I know um, I just recently left the classroom about three years ago. And I know when I was in the classroom, sort of the data analysis piece was, was really big. So I imagine it still is. We have tried to make the data available in multiple forms, but also in a way that you all can use it. Um, so it's not just an exercise in looking at numbers, but actually like getting something from it that can impact what you're doing in your classroom. I mean, just really quickly here, I can see approximately at what grade level my students' knowledge is. So I've got some kids that have struggle and that they're hitting about a second grade level in math. And then I have some that are more advanced. So again, it's just another way to try and give you that information at the surface so you can make those adjustments in class. Additional things, we have class level data. If you're comparing between your classes, just lots of reports available, lots of ways for you to look at different data. Just the overall objective idea that I hope we leave you with is that we are supporting you. Um, we're not trying to make any extra work for you. That this is a super collaborative relationship and that's why we love it. And that all the data that we have available on the student side and the teacher side is designed to be actionable and usable for you. One of the important reports that teachers had found really useful last year was a class um, progress report. Like I said, however many minutes ago, something that was really instrumental to the success with Navigator D last year was the goal setting. And so the com a common goal sort of towards the beginning of the year as kids were getting used to the system was two competency gains per week. So that means mastering two lessons, so two topics, by scoring 80% or better on those lessons. Obviously, if you set a goal, you then have to check to see if it's being achieved. So we have this set up, just another way to present the data to have a printable or downloadable progress report for you where you can set the date to whatever you want. I just have it at all time because the data looks nicer, but you can set it to weekly, monthly, whatever. Most of the teachers last year would just check at the end of the week. Did each of these kids, do they have two in this column? Some teachers were, were operating instead of gains, instead of those competency gains where the students mastered the lessons, their goals were like, no, nope, spend 20 minutes a week. And so then they were checking the time. So this just gives you that traditional class progress report feel. Like I said, it's downloadable and printable. And you can also print the individual reports, which um, has come in handy in the past in conferences. Um, I know it's always nice to have something on paper that you can show a parent or guardian in terms of progress. And so We've tried to design it to make it easy and clear um, so you can share that with parents and guardians as well in terms of positives or areas for improvement. 